Hey guys, welcome to another All Base Creations Effects Tutorials, Demos, and Reviews. Today we have up the Ampeg SGT DI um, Stomp Box Preamp, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Um, has some great features to it. It's a great um, build quality, very solid. Um, it's a little bit bigger than some of the bigger EHX pedals, uh, Electro Harmonics pedals. Um, ton of great features, I guess. Um, you got two different preamps, SBT and a B15, of course. Then you also have a um, high boost, um, ultra highs, um, ultra lows, and also ultra low cut as well. Then you have um, three cabinet IRs on there as well um, that are factory. Then you have three more that are user programmable. So these ones um, that are for the, you know, fixed, basically you can't change them. Um, a 15, 410 cabinet, 810 cabinet. And then you also have a 1.8 cabinet, a 210 cabinet, and a 212 cabinet. Um, and we'll get to some of those later. Um, then you got a compressor, volume, bass, uh, um, mids, uh, mid frequency, then you also have treble. And then this whole stack is for this circuit, which is an overdrive circuit, either for um, S, uh, like a SVT or a more smoother one would be a, a B15. So let's get into it. Um, here's my bass dry. Well, that's the bass dry. Let's kick the just the preamp on. Um, we literally don't have the um, hours on yet, so let's get us some more volume. And that's with my bass flat, um, you know, no EQ. This is actually my general Ampeg setting um, that you see here that I use on not just this, but um, even my BA210 version 2, um, V2. Um, and to get closer to that type of sound, you want to set the mid-range around 500, and that actually gets you... So as you can hear, it gives a very nice tone. Um, and that's even, that's just with a little bit of EQ pretty much. Um, so I don't really do videos about stuff being flat because very rarely are you just using a, a preamp like this flat. Um, this is how I pretty much would use it. I mean, of course you could add more bottom. Or if you wanted more mids, add more mids in there, cut the highs. And all this is with my bass flat. I haven't done any EQing on my bass yet. 
nothing like that i will pull out my mid switch and that does give me a slightly different characteristic on my bass especially for finger style playing So as you it gets a very nice bite on there when you when you do that. Um that's pretty much how I would use it. I, I usually like my mid set somewhere. If I'm doing a cut, it's gonna be around 250, um, 200, 250, probably around like 250, 220, somewhere around there. Um, if I'm doing a mid boost, I'm usually doing that around 500, um, somewhere around there. And then the rest I do from my bass or with finger, um, hand positioning in my right hand, as you can see. It's gonna give you a different tone in. And here, even playing here is gonna give you a different tone. So, you know, take all that into consideration when you're listening and things as well. Um, but let's move on. Um, so that's the SVT. Uh, let's go back to um, nothing, basically. Right? Um, so now we're going to go to the B15. So you see the B15 is much more of a warmer, tubier type sound to it than you know, let's cut, let's do a little slap and pop adjustment here. So, again, moving the mids around 220, uh, 220 250, cutting it, uh, boosting the highs a little bit. Let's get some lows in there. So as you get a very nice sound um, right off the bat. So, you know, adjusting it different ways is going to give you different sound. Let's put the mids around 1K. Great, great sound as a preamp. Um, that's this is actually how I would use it to record and stuff like that. But I would do more EQing for my bass. Um, let me see. Let me pull a little bit. Um, add some bass. A little. Don't really need any more highs. Cut the mids on my bass a little bit. You know, you can even add um, some more compression to it. Add a little bit of highs. Uh, 
So the compressor is pretty harsh, like right off the back um, for me. Um, just that's with it um, almost all the way up, all the way up. You don't ever need your bass that squashed. Um, so you can see soon. For me, that's too much. I like to have be able to have some dynamics in there. So like, I would only just barely turn it on. So yeah, you can get a um, very nice tone out of that, and that's the B15 side of it. Um, let's go back and let's just go to flat, even though I, I hate going to flat. Um, you guys already explained it. Why? I don't... Um, flat very rarely works for me in terms of cutting through the mix and everything else, so... Um, yeah, somebody usually ends up EQ, and even if you don't, the engineer, somebody's going to do it. It's never going to be just flat, more than likely. All right, so that's that's with it flat. Let's, let's turn it off. Let's get a little more of a finger style. Right, so you're in there with that. Um, nothing on now. Right, um, B fifteen. So, personally, for slapping pop, I like the SVT. Um, for finger style, I do like the B fifteen. Um, B15, if I was going to do finger style, let me see. Uh, I probably had something like this. So, you know, something like that. Um, I already showed you guys slap and pop setter. Um, so let's get into some of these um, other features here before we go into the the IR section let's 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 add the um, bass boost in there start with the SVT side so this is bass without it right with it course it'll be great for jazz type stuff so rather um you know you can cut your highs on here you know i got brand new um diadario um pro stills on here so they're very bright strings So 
call basically great tone there you know So, you know, very nice, warm tone you can get out of that. Um, B15 side, of course, um, again, bass without it. Right? Uh, let's move this back to flat two. And just, um, now we on there. So, great sounding preamp, basically. Um, even with that bass boost on, without it, with it. Um, bass cut. So I, I'm guessing a um, good place to use that bass cut would be for solo. Say you're going to use this as your solo channel. You know, you're probably boosting mids around a thousand, around 500 to a thousand. Um, you're going to need to add any bass. You might cut the highs a bit, but... <laughs> a lot of clarity to your notes and on that note uh let's see something <laughs> So that's actually with the bass cut on and the B15 with the overdrive on. Um, I personally, let me see which one is level. This, this is level. So the, the bigger one on the bottom is the level. This one on top controls how gritty it, it gets. Right? You can add that. Um, Matter of fact, let's go back for just a second because I forgot to show you guys the highs. Um, Apple, so let's get that back. All right, let's get this flat. Let's get this back there. There. Mm -mm -mm. So, if you want to use it as a slap and pop channel. You know, so you don't. <laughs> so you gotta get a great tone out of that, even without EQing. You just cut the mids a little bit. You don't even have to cut the mids. Right? 
right? Um, so now got that out the way. Let's turn those off. Let's go back to this overdrive section. Let's go to the SVT side of it. Get a nice finger style tone. So this is, and that's the other thing too. You can actually use the overdrive without the preamp. So you don't have to have the EQ section. You can just run straight these two knobs right here. That'll control that. I wonder if, yeah, so um, these two switches and all of this is disabled when this preamp is off. Nope. With the preamp. And see. start adding that EQ in there you can get some nice really nice tones or even if you just turn on the bass boost So, you know, great tone there. Uh, let's do B15 in there too, without the bass boost. Just so you can hear the difference. So as you can see, the SVT is much brighter, um, overdrive is much brighter. Um, B15 is much warmer, it's much better for I would say synth stuff. Um, if you're going for like a hard rock sound, you probably want to go with that SVT sound a little bit more. All right, so that's pretty much that overdrive circuit. So let's go to SVT mode. Let's turn. Um, it's a good time where I'll stop and explain some things about this pedal. Um, so on the side here, you have a, a knob that pushes in and out, which is pretty cool. Um, and everything, every time you move these knobs, everything automatically saves. And you just push them back in and on the side. Um, this is for the auxiliary side. You have a mono um, quarter inch. Then you have an eighth inch that's a stereo jack. Um, and that's pretty cool um, for inputs. Um, so then you got your in, your input here. Then you got your through here. So the through is just a dry signal, pretty much straight from the input straight to the through. Um, power input, um, preamp output. So the preamp output does not use the IRs or um, auxiliary in. So you. Um, Coming out of here, you want to go to, to your from your preamp out, you want to go to your amp or um, to your return. If, if you have an effects loop on your amp, you can return or preamp or uh, power amp in, things like that. Um, and that'll actually let you use it more of like a preamp. I'm going to show you that, guys, um, in a second. Pretty much where you'll turn something like this um, BA210 into like a SVT 210 um, by simply bypassing the preamp that's built in here and going straight into the return in the effects loop or the power in, which is the same thing on something like this Harky head here. You have a, um, a preamp out and a power amp in on these um, compared to the Ampeg ones, you have an effects loop. So that's, that's a major difference. Don't let it confuse you. The return and power uh, amp in are the same thing, essentially. 
So they both bypass, meaning they both bypass the preamp and just use the power amp. And all your tone be coming from here. Um, on now on the side here, you got your XLR out. Um, everything comes through the XLR out, except for the auxiliary. Um, so like preamp, all that stuff. Um, IRs can all be heard through the XLR. The reason they do that is so you can use this on stage as you got one one thing going to your amp, and you don't need IRs going to your amp, but you will need them going to the PA system and things like that. So it's it's very useful in that way. Um, so now blue, this blue LED that just cut on here is now telling you that we're engaging. The IRs coming out the XLR. And what you've been hearing so far is just the pedal directly into the mixing board. I'm also going to turn on this BA210 in a second here. And we're going to run it straight into the return loop. So we'll be using it like a, a preamp. We're pretty much bypassing all the preamp in here. Just using this actual pedal as a preamp. But we'll get to that after this. So here we go. So as you can see, um, this is my bass dry. Uh, um, with the preamp. Take that off, uh, no bass boost or nothing, just the. So as you can see, it's it's a I like the 115. It's okay. Um, see it flash red that means that um meaning this this uh blue light here uh next to cab if that flashes red that means you're clipping clipping it So if you actually EQ it a little bit, let me see. So one thing I would um, suggest that Ampeg does with this pedal is you need a blend in that in that IR app y'all need to add a blend between the preamp and the cabinet and the dry signal y'all can find a way to have a blend between those three somewhere we can blend between them you know or or you know some way to some way to do that and save it would be awesome um also I would say when y'all do your IRs, can y'all please add the tweeter? Like all of these IRs, I'm about to go through them. All of these IRs are so dark because they just uh, mic the speaker. They didn't, they didn't mic um, the tweeter as well. And I'll show you what I'm talking about because this is the only part 
I don't like about this pedal is all the IRs have no tweeter action. That's the the 410. This is this is my signal without it. Your signal can't get no brighter. It ain't gonna I mean but it's not translating when you turn on it. And when you actually play a, a Ampeg 410 with the tweeter, that tweeter is, is hot. Hey, that thing be slapping. But they didn't add it in here for some reason. Here's the 810 cabinet. So that's the 810. And that's actually a really accurate because the, the 810 usually don't even have a tweet. I don't even, or, or you can't hear it because it's 810s, but um, let's move on to the 18. Oh, sorry, that's that's without it. Uh so you can see it's nice. It's it's alright. Um this is the two ten. Uh let me see. And also Another little neat feature is you, each one of these hours have their own volume, and when you when you move the volume knob and you save, it automatically saves to that. So right bam and then two twelves so those are the cabinets basically and this is as bright as they get pretty much um you know, I can add some more bright. I mean, I can't make my bass any more brighter. I'm going to show you guys something real quick. I want you guys to have a quick sound comparison. So that's my bass flat, right? Check this out. Let me turn these IR. Oh, that's another thing. These IRs don't turn off when you turn the preamp off. So if you have the switch on and that if that LED is lit, then the IRs are on whether you want them to be or not. They don't turn off just because you turn these two switches on top of these two. So you have to literally hit that switch on the side. So, but check this. That sounds like a 410 with a tweeter. Unfortunately, Zoom B6 IR, and this is my only thing with this Ampeg pedal, is the IRs and the cost. It is expensive. It's 400 and something dollars just for a preamp when you got multi-effects pedals who are doing a really great job at amp modeling. Um, for 500 now it is it is really quality now and it does do what they say it does and you can load your own irs on there but the ones that come with is a no-go for me the rest the the sound of the pedal and everything else the the overdrive circuit all that stuff sounds amazing it's just i don't understand why it's costing so much um and maybe that's just me being crazy but 
check this out. So that was the B6 with the amp, with the SVT preamp. Not this one. The one on the B6. It has an SVT preamp on there. And uh, uh, an Ampeg 410 with a tweeter. And they mic the cabinet and the tweeter. So now you get an actual... You get all the sound. You can change. You can change the DIs and everything. If I wanted to have more of a two count, or I can go to more of a solid state sound. So, you know, let's do a preamp, um, preamp shootout real quick. This is my bass flat. Nothing on it. Right? This is... I'm going to set them exactly the same. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. No compressor. This is the SGT. Which sounds great. The only problem is Zoom had did that like years ago. This B this um B three Zoom B three has a great Ampeg SVT on it, but the B six definitely nailed it. Here's the B six. And not only that, the V6 is $500 plus all these other effects, plus colored screen, touch screen, um, has DIs, um, effects loop, and everything else. You know, I do love the sound of this pedal, but it's just hard to argue with the, the value, the value of the Zoom V6 that's going to give you almost the exact same sound. So, Zoom V6. Let me add a little more volume to this. B6. SGT. So, you know. Which sounds great. That's the preamp. This is um, B6. This is the B6 with the IR. Right? Now, let's bypass all that. Let's let's see, let's compare the Ampeg, this SGT's 410s to that 410. Right? So let's bypass this. B6. some more of a mid sound. That's the B6. Bypass the B6. SGT.
It's just missing so much of the details that the B6 nail. <laughs> And on the B6, you still have, they already had um, sweepable mids on the, the B6. And they also have ultra highs, ultra lows, both at the same time and cut on the ultra low. So, man, I like the pedal. I really do like this pedal. It does sound good. It sounds great. Uh, my only problem is the cost, the cost and the fact that the, the IRs are not that good. Um, the preamp's amazing. The preamp by itself is just, if, if, you know what I'm saying? If you want simplistic and, you know, I, it sounds great. The preamp sounds great by itself. It's just, they have to lower the cost of this. Ampex too big to have this gigantic pedal first of all they can make it smaller second of all it don't need to cost four hundred dollars this thing should be around two something two hundred something dollars this is not a four hundred dollar pedal um it sounds amazing and all that and i understand they they you know but and mind you i'm an ampeg guy i love ampegs um SVT, I love their BA series. Their BA series is the best amp ever. That's what I really would like to see a BA. Thank you. That'd be nice. But, you know, nothing really is, um, it's not nothing crazy. Um, I wouldn't say it's like for 400 something dollars, I would be expecting a lot more. Like, um, better IRs for sure. Like, especially, why, why would y'all not? do the tweeters as well like you that's a very important part of the sound everybody doesn't play without if you play without a tweeter these hours are fine but if you play with a tweeter that's not going to work out well for you um other than that the build of it is really solid um the preamp sounds great the overdrive sounds great um bass boost and all that stuff and treble ultra highs all that stuff sounds great the only thing holding this pedal back is the quality of those IRs, which they can fix easily by redoing them and updating, doing an update. That is a very easy fix, just doing an update and then adding that blend as well between at least the preamp and the, the cab. You know, if you could decide how much of the preamp and how much of the IR cab you want, that might also help you out with that little... Um, issue of not having any of the brighter sound in in the irs um yeah but other than that i really like it i'm an ampeg guy so i had to try it out like i love ampeg stuff that svt with a 410 and a tweeter if it wasn't so heavy man i that would be my rig that would be my my every single gig rig would be a svt or a BA head with, with the SVT 410s with a tweeter. Um, you know, uh, what else would I say? Yeah, so um, let's do this. Let's use it as a, a preamp real quick for my bass. See what that's talking about. I mean, for my, um, for this. So I'm going to cut the line out. Uh, let me see. Turn that down. That's still coming in. That's still coming in. So, uh, let's just unplug this. Give me one second, guys. All right. Um... This should be running to the amp. One second, guys. I'm just getting this um, set up so we can hear it through some Ampeg and speakers. You know, these are genuine Ampeg speakers from the BA 210 V2, 210s, and a tweeter. We're going to use this as a preamp. And I actually did this this morning at church with this Harky head. And it actually sounds really great as a preamp. 
like you know straight in you know if you want to have versatility and whether you're um you know using the the head preamp or using the amp peg you know you kind of switch it out without ever having to switch out head other issue is with the price is their 500 watt head is also $500 so I'm not understanding what's going on here um, with this price let me see why we not getting no action One second, guys. I can actually take these off. Let me get the sound out of here. Main preamp. That one was supposed to do. Oh. Sorry, guys. Took me a second. Oh, that's mad loud. So that's my bass directly into the return. If I basically just want my bass sounds like going directly into the speakers. Um, it's pretty much sounds like an Aguilar preamp because that's what I have in my bass, but if I want to add that Ampeg tone, so add some bass boost. you get the point um with that it's, it's just you could you don't even need the ultra high that's that that was the vst by the way so let's go with um the b15 with the ultra lows ultra highs clean you know what i'm saying that's what i say that's a preamp 
This joint's a fire preamp by itself. Like, if you run that joint straight into it, that joint's a fire preamp. It ain't even, um, yeah, you ain't really, yeah, <laughs> you ain't gonna go wrong. It's, it's definitely fire. say because I have a, a very bright bass I do like the B15 um, sound on here a lot more it's, it's not as bright it's a little bit more it's, it's, it's emulating the tube app so it's a little bit more pillowy um, uh, a little warmer uh, you know even with the bright on you know and everything so let's see let's switch switch, switch the highs to about 500 <laughs> Let's keep it right there. Let's just shift them up to a thousand. Because what people don't understand, a lot of um, your mid range is pretty much going to shape your your um, the tone of your amps and stuff like that. Like the the, the frequency of that mid range, um, forty hertz is forty hertz. You know what I'm saying? Six thousand, eight thousand hertz is about the same um, in terms of the sounds you pretty much will get from it um, out of out of your bass, um, it's not going to change that much drastically. But that mid range where you choose to boost or cut that is going to make the world of a difference for real, for real. That's at a thousand cutting at a thousand cutting at two thousand. Let's turn all this extra stuff off. So most of your magic is gonna happen between that 200 to, to four up to 4,000 hertz. Um, so they give you at least 200 to 3,000 hertz, which is amazing. Um, for your mid range, you know, you got as you can see, you can get. going down to 200, cutting at 200. Cutting at 3,000. Completely different sounds. Cutting at 1,000. Let's see, let's put this around five. That's why I said I like mine around 500. You know, about 500. That's for finger style, really. But for slap and pop, I like to put in. But let's let's boost. Let's let's do go through some boost. About five 
Nice with the with the little bit of B fifteen, a little bit of grit on there. You see, I got that thing all the way down, all the way down. I feel like the the SVT is much more harder driven. Um, just from the 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 right off the back with the game stage, but when you start cranking it. Messing around with that mid range is going to change the characteristics of that um, overdrive and just the details of your bass in general. You see, that's that more that boxy, muddy range. That's why I usually cut around that 200. That's around that 200, 250 range. All that muff. All these other frequencies. You get down here, it's like that boxy sound, you know? So that's why I cut that um, part of the frequency. That's, that's something that ain't really got nothing to do with the pedal. That's just a little bass tip. But, yeah, so overall, um, I even like this little bar they put here to make sure that you, when you're hitting these, um, foot switches, you're not hitting any of this stuff. Uh, you're not breaking off those toggles. But, um, yeah, so I love it because it does give me that Ampeg sound. Um, and running it through uh, straight into a power amp, it is going to give you exactly that SVT B15 sound. And that's what they're mostly selling. They they adding on the IRs, and that's something new for them. So you know, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and give them a pass on that one. And uh, you know, I'm hoping that with the updates, they'll give us better IRs. Uh, I believe they said you can add the ones from Line Six IR catalog somehow. Um, but yeah, uh, if they. But yeah, it's a great thing, and I like how they have, they did very good with the routing as well, preamp, 
no IR, XLR, um, has the IRs on it, you know what I'm saying? And it has the options to use them or not use them, which is great. But if you got to add something to where we can, in the software where we can blend them, um, at least between the preamp and the R, that would be amazing. Um, from there, um, the, like I said, build quality is second to none. The, the quality, there's no doubt this thing's going to last. It's a tank for sure. Um, it's on par with my electro harmonics pedals or my boss pedals. Um, you know, it's it's a tank for sure. Um, uh, anything else? I mean, if you can make the form factor smaller on the on the version two, and may, I know there's nothing you can do about this one, but the next one make the sm form factor smaller. If y'all could find a way to lower that price, that would be amazing. Because y'all know we can get a whole head for five hundred dollars. That's five hundred watts that you guys make. I know you're not gonna get an SVT for five hundred brand new, but you can definitely get, um, you know, what I'm saying a Portaflex. <laughs> I mean, you know, and that is an Ampeg sound or this BA two ten version two. They discontinued, but this whole amp is five hundred dollars. The head, and it has an extension cab to go up to four hundred watts, and it's got two tens and a tweeter scrambler circuit, so it has an overdrive circuit in it and all the same EQ options and stuff that this one has except for the um, sweepable frequency range, mid-range, mid you know? Um, so it even has the XL in, um, I mean the auxiliary in and XLR out. It just doesn't have the option to blend them or whatever the case, but. Um, I like the pedal. It just, it, it's, it's got that price. If y'all want to sell a bunch of these, which y'all really could, man, at two fifty, these things would be flying off the shelf. Two hundred dollars, two fifty, I would buy it twice, literally. And you, I mean, I know y'all wouldn't have made it <laughs> off me once, but it's so much. It, it'd be so much more on par with everything else that's out here at, at, at two fifty versus the the four hundred, almost four fifty mark when you have a B six which allows all these extra effects and routing options, effects loops. You can have two bass inputs. You got an effects loop and uh, amp out and XLR plus a two hour recorder, uh, a looper, uh, a ton of effects and all this extra stuff in there plus the amp models and better IRs. Their preamps, the preamp is, they're close in quality and sound quality um, I do think that the SGT does get the edge on the preamp versus the the B6 um, Ampeg SVT in there. There's uh, emulation in there, but in terms of the IR, that's where um, this one loses all day to the B6. The B6 has way better. I would love to be able to take that IR off of there and put it on this pedal. You know, I might even run this pedal before the B6 so I could run this preamp into the B6 IR, then into the software, uh, you know, the, the system, because that's what will sound the best. It doesn't sound the best um, coming from these. As you can saw, their 410s there was no comparison to theirs. And not even go into the other ones, like the 810. They have an 810 cabinet on that B6 as well, and they have a 115 as well. So I wasn't trying to go, I'm not trying to say, you know, I'm not trying to, to go in on Ampeg because they're my favorite bass company. Like, I know you guys see other amps here because, you know, you sometimes you need different sounds, you know. Um, but the Ampeg, all I need is an Ampeg amp and, uh, on every gig and I'm fine. Like, if I had an SV10, 410 um, with a tweeter that was... 60 pounds altogether. I would love that. Maybe that's an idea y'all come out with. Update that so I don't have to. But this 410 cabinet actually only weighs about 50 pounds. This 115 weighs about uh, 40 something pounds. So if you guys could just please bring the cost of this thing down, um, and if that would be great because it would be a whole. It would change everything. It would change everything about it at the different price point. Um, even the IR should be more forgivable at a different price point. 
that 250, you know what I'm saying? Take the hours I give you for real, for real. Like you could buy some extension. Maybe y'all could come out with some more with that's a little bit better quality. I need that tweeter in there too. You know what I'm saying? And the option to blend things like the mics. If you're going to use two mics, you need options to blend between them. Maybe changing the phase of it and maybe to invert the phase of the two mics. Um, it's a lot. I would just su suggest Ampeg buys a B6 and look at their flexibility on their IRs and stuff and then go from there. Um, I know that's kind of cheating, but hey, I like Ampeg. So I want them to win too. I love their stuff. Um, quality of it their warranties but with this right here if they would lower the price it would be 10 times better and you know ours would be way forgivable but it's uh, overall i'm gonna get this pedal i'm gonna give it a three and a half stars out of five um it would have had a four and a half if it weren't for that price that price literally took a whole star off of y'all smile and then the ours took a half a star bow so um, yeah, it's a great pedal. Um, like I said, I might, I might, you know, you might sit on a gig with me or two, you know, but it's, it's, it's definitely pricey. It's not a cheap pedal at all for what it is. So it's a, it's a great sound. Try to check it out for yourselves and, um, tell them the bass nigga sent you and, and. If you, if you happen to talk to Ampeg, give them some of my suggestions for me. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. And this has been another All Base Creations Effects Tutorials, Demos, and Reviews. And this has been the review of the Ampeg SGTDI, which I do think is a great pedal, solid quality, just needs better IRs and a lower price point. All right, I'll holler at you guys. Peace.